Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and this special study titled Holiday Guilt by Association. Our main text will be Romans chapter 14 verses 5 through 9. And we recorded this study just a couple of weeks before Thanksgiving and presented this information in response to dozens who have asked about celebrating or taking part in some way during holidays. We'll see that this matter is one that each believer should take seriously and take it to the Lord in prayer with the full knowledge of what God's Word has to say on these matters. And we seek to be of some assistance to those struggling with these questions, but as you will hear in our study, it's not our place to lay down legalistic laws for folks to follow. We want to direct the individual believer to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit be your guide. And we would like to read a letter, a letter we love, from a sister named Elizabeth. And she is learning the Word of God by means of our internet ministry. And she writes to us from Taiwan. And she says, Dear Pastor Greg, greeting in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank God that I get you in my YouTube and Facebook. I am a Baptist, and your ministry brings me more blessing in my spiritual life that I could continue growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus. And she gave us a generous gift and said she hopes to give more as the Lord leads her to, and then closes by saying, Thank you and God bless in Jesus Christ, Elizabeth. What a great encouragement it is to get letters like this one sent by Sister Elizabeth that came by air mail from Taiwan. And uh, thank you for writing, sister, and may the Lord bless you and Jesus as well. If you'd like to write, you can send email to bbbfohio at yahoo.com, or you can send your letter the way Elizabeth did through the postal system by writing to Bible Believers Fellowship, P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio. 43085 and this information is always available at bbfohio.com and now let's join our study from the King James Bible that is intended as Elizabeth said to help you grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus we begin part one of our two part study Amen. titled holiday guilt by right, association as I said in Romans 14 I'm going to read a few verses here but um, before I get in there, uh, just to give you a little introduction, title this Holiday Guilt by Association. And one of the reasons for this message is on Sundays we've been going through the book of Galatians, the epistle to the church in Galatia. And over the last couple of studies, we've touched on some of these things of this uh, thing where people, uh, they have, I think, in, among Bible believers, they have a good intentions. They want to be loyal and faithful to the Word of God. And so, sadly, some of them have gone to extremes. And it's becoming very cultic among King James Bible believers these days. And I'm not going to have anything to do with it, and I don't give a flip who doesn't like it. And some of these preachers out there who are trying to control people, and pastors are not called to control people. Amen. We're, we're actually told not to lord over Amen. the flock. And so what you have going on today is preachers are telling everybody what to do and, and how to think. I was reading, by the way, it's nothing new under the sun. How many you know that? I was reading, reading uh, Schaff's church history and I'm in volume two and he's talking about how very early Ignatius and Arrhenius were, trying, were responsible for this mentality of the pastor being at the Holy Spirit. And I'm not joking. Now, I've said that in, in our studies on Sunday, and I've halfway been joking, but the reality is that is how it was presented very early on, that the Holy Spirit was in the pastor and the, the presbytery, the deacons, and that through them you would find out what you needed to think and do. Well, we've come full circle. We're back to where 
Pastors want to control everything you think and everything you do. And folks, I don't care who it is. I don't care what his name is. I don't care where he comes from. I don't care how big his church is. It's wrong. Amen. Amen. Now, we're living in, in, in this time, that, just for the sake of those who may watch this or hear it in the future, this is coming up on the holidays, Thanksgiving, a couple weeks away from now. And you have Christmas. Uh, some of you may celebrate Hanukkah. And I, I think Charlie's into Kwanzaa. <laughs> Um, wow. then, then we got uh, uh, New Year's, uh, you know that. And there's just, there are people out there who want to dictate what you take part in and what you don't. Now, there are some black and white issues, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But there are some other things that are between you and God. Yeah. And what we got today is what we could call, what the title is, Holiday Guilt by Association. And that is that because certain holidays are in some way associated with other things happening at this time of the year, then that makes them necessarily wicked and evil. And that is not a biblical manner of judgment. Amen. And we're going to see that. But we're going to start with the text, Romans chapter 14, beginning in verse 5. And just read the along and if I stop you then I do but otherwise we'll go through the whole thing beginning of verse 5 read that with me one man esteemeth one day above another another esteemeth every day alike let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind I'm going to stop you there that needs to be impressed upon your mind deeply that uh, there are certain days I don't like I don't like Valentine's Day amen Oh, come on, guys. Get a spine. You guys don't like it either. Preach. Sweetest days day even worse. Now, but see, that's why you should celebrate, not because it's Valentine's Day. That's my opinion, though. Let me, let me stop myself here. If you want to get suckered in by Hallmark and by every female in your, in your life a Valentine's, Valentine's Day card, and buy everybody gift cards, you just have at it. And add me to the list. I'll take it. Amen. Amen? But I personally think it's just a scam. You know what? I mean, Jenny and I agreed to this from the very beginning. That's why I'm preaching so boldly right now about it. Because, because Jenny and I, when we first got together, we were married, but we didn't have, we, we, were, we were, you know, we fell in love like in 10 minutes we were married. Amen. You know, amen? <laughs> so we were married before we were together for a Valentine's Day. And when that first Valentine's Day came up, I was a little, you know, well, you know, Jenny, what do you think about Valentine's Day? She said, I hate it. <laughs> I said, I love you. I just, I love you. And she, but her, her, Reason was the same as mine. Then what's Valentine's Day to me? What to, we have? We we have our we have our first date anniversary. We have October the tenth at ten ten a.m. I proposed, Biggin, and we just had our tenth anniversary of that, and now we're coming upon the wedding anniversary, which is November nineteenth. We'll take <laughs> gift cards, checks, money orders. And. I know it was on the Buckeye Michigan game. Yes, that, the originally. But they moved that. But anyway, that we celebrate things that really mean something to us. And so, you know, these other things. But I'm not up here to tell you you're a sinner if you celebrate Valentine's Day. And for years, I used to take advantage of the after Valentine's Day sales. You know? If, if it didn't say Valentine's, but it had a heart on it, or, or I love you or something, man, that's going to come in handy through the years. Amen. 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 So, you know, wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Amen? Amen. And Tracy's like, Tracy, I think I'm getting, a, I'm getting a vibe from Tracy right now. She likes Valentine's Day, and she's like, I'm glad James ain't here. <laughs> oh, he's into it, and you're not. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
<laughs> now this, this conversation that we just had is a perfect example of the way it ought to be. It says one man is, or woman <clears throat> esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Isn't that good? Amen. Let's keep reading. Verse 6. Read it with me. He that regardeth the day regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not and giveth God thanks. Verse 7. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord. Now I'll read verse 9 carefully. Read it. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. That's what it's all about. We live under the Lord, and when we die, it's under the Lord. <laughs> And so the things we do when we're alive, the choices we make, it shouldn't be to please Greg Miller. Amen. It shouldn't be to please the people sitting around you in church. It shouldn't be to please your mama and your daddy, your uncle, your aunt, your granny, your grandpa, it doesn't matter who it is. Those people are not going to be sitting on the judgment seat when you are judged. Amen. I won't be there. No other preacher or pastor is going to be there. You need to worry about the one who's going to be there, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. And so every decision you make should be about what does Jesus want me to do here? Amen. It really boils down. Amen, we're done? Done? Amen, we're close? Amen. Some of you are a little too excited about that. But this... This text, you ought to mark it in your Bible. I'm telling you, it's one of the most important texts you're going to have living the Christian life today. Because you're constantly going to be haggled, in some cases, by Bible-believing Christians. In other cases, you're going to have the Seventh-day Adventists. They're going to make a big deal about Saturday being the Sabbath. And then you're going to have uh, other people who are Christians, but they'll call Sunday the Sabbath. And they'll act like that if you go out to eat, that you're sinning or something. Yeah. And do, do I... I don't like... I don't go out a lot on Sundays. I, I just... I would like to have kind of a Sabbath on Sunday. But you know what? That's not law. And, it, and I'm not going to try to dictate that to everybody. It's certainly not a Sabbath. Have you heard people say that, oh, the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday? And they say, so you should go back to Saturday. No, how about this? You're both heretics. Amen. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> See, because Saturday is not a Sabbath for a Christian. It's for the Jew. Amen. And Sunday's never going to be and never has been a Sabbath. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you should be fully persuaded though. Amen. Fully persuaded. That means you need to take care. You need to really dig in, pray, but get into the Word and ask God to show you so that you can build a firm conviction and be fully persuaded about these things. Amen. What does it say at the end of verse 5? Let every man be fully persuaded where? Yeah, in his own mind. <laughs> it's all about you and the Lord. It's in your mind that you need to be fully persuaded. And that doesn't mean you go around trying to change everybody else's mind. But it also means you don't worry about what is on other people's minds. See? Now, we do not have time to cover the whole chapter, but Romans 14 does go on to say that you know if you're doing something that you feel liberty to do, but you know you're going to offend somebody... Don't purposely do it. I mean, you know, you can't help it sometimes. I mean, I've had, I, I had a friend who was really into the don't eat pig stuff. And I don't eat a lot of pig, but I like my bacon. <laughs> Brother, Sean, Brother Sean has has seen fit to make sure I have a supply. And thank you, Sean. And that's a hint to anybody who wants to join that ministry. And <laughs> yes. Bacon Buyers Fellowship, BBF. I love, if I could eat bacon every day, I would. But I know that's not good for you. Let your moderation be known unto all men. So I, I moderate my bacon intake. 
But I had a friend who thought it was a sin, and as much as I tried to talk to him, you know, they just wouldn't. And one day he walked in, and I was having me a big old breakfast with bacon. I had eggs, I had toast, I had hash browns, and I had bacon. And I only had, I had two pieces on my plate, and I had him bring out two extras. And he come walking up, and you thought that I was caught, you know, stealing money or something. I mean, there's this terrible look on his face and everything. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't know you'd gonna be here. If you don't want me to, I won't even eat my bacon. And he says, no, you know, it's okay. It's a, and then and we talked and he left. I knew he was, he was hurt. I mean, he was. It's just like it was that important to him. I'm sorry, but I didn't do that on purpose. And I never would. But, there's sometimes you just can't help it. But Romans goes through and says, you know, don't let your liberty be something that hurts other people. But at the same time, there's a balance here. Because there's some people who you're not going to cause a stumbling block to. Because they're not baby Christians. They are heretics. Amen. You see the difference? Right. Amen. Now, if, if there's somebody you're going to hurt and cause to stumble because they're a baby Christian, don't do it. But then there are some who are just heretical. Or there's others that might, even, might really be heretical, but they're just controlling. I don't care what they think. I don't, I don't. If I know a guy isn't weak in the faith, but he's just a bully type, right. I'm going to order bacon while he's standing there. <laughs> Give me bacon on bacon, and if you can make the bun out of bacon, do that too. <laughs> I'm just like that. Why? Because grow up. It's time for you to grow up. It's, well, it's actually time for you to be hum humble. It's time for you to realize you don't control people. Amen. Of course... One of the big ones that people are going after today in this part of the year is Christmas. Yay! That's kind of not loud enough. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm not going to actually add that to the praise book or anything. Aww. But... <laughs> But I do. I purpose. Listen, I want to let you know. You know something? I love this time of year. Amen. And I hear people, see people on Facebook, and even the ones that aren't like the holiday hunters, but they're just people who ah, so much materialism. There's not in my home. Amen. You know? Well, we're poor. That doesn't hurt matters any. <laughs> But you know, I'm going to brag on this girl who's just, you know, smarting off over here. But when she was growing up, the, the, her two older stepbrothers and, and my three girls, we combined the family. You know, some of you know about that? One, minus the, the, the one boy, and we would have had a Brady Bunch here. I do not ever, ever remember any of those kids being materialistic during this time of the year. I don't remember any of them getting upset if they didn't get something. I don't remember them demanding things. And during this time of the year, we made sure to emphasize the truth. Amen. And that means my kids knew there wasn't a Santa Claus. Amen. Great. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm glad Dre left before I said that. <laughs> 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 See if it comes running out. But our kids, it's, i got to tell you this funny story too. Uh, little Mariah. You know, one of the ladies at church goes, what Santa Claus going to bring you for Christmas? There is no Santa Claus. <laughs> it was great. Mommy and Daddy buy me stuff. Yeah. But... They also knew that Jesus, more than likely, were, I'm pretty sure he wasn't born in December. Yeah. And we even taught them that there, we don't even know whether or not there were three wise men. Right. There were three gifts. It doesn't say three wise men. Amen. We taught them the truth. Amen. And then we still enjoyed family. We still enjoyed singing about Jesus and his birth. We, we emphasized there's a reason why baby Jesus came, and it wasn't so that we could all have Christmas presents. It was so that he could grow up and die for sin. Amen. You see? So if 
the holiday hunters would get off the pedestal and get down to earth and emphasize that reason that Jesus came. And you can even tell the truth. Tell people the truth. Tell them. Amen. Jesus wasn't born in December. Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> he was probably born... Well, I'm going to tell you that later. It's also the time of the year when holiday hunters hunt. Okay, so this is the time of year when well-meaning people will try to make your life miserable if you try to enjoy this time of the year. I just don't let them. I just, I'm sorry, I just don't let it happen. Uh, you know, if it's a baby Christian, what I've done in the past is try to avoid doing anything that's going to upset them and teach them. Give them the facts as well. We're going to talk about some of those in just a minute. So here's why we're told Christmas is evil. And I want to show you this guilt by association thing doesn't work. First of all, Christmas means Christ Mass. Therefore, it's evil because the Mass is evil. Is the Mass evil? Yes, yes it is. Because Christ must, Christmas means Christ Mass, then means we shouldn't take part in Christmas, right? Well, here's the problem with that. Have you ever taken a note of the days of the week? If you're going to set a standard, stick with the standard or drop it. Right. Amen. The days of the week start with Sunday, which was for sun worship. Yeah. Monday was for moon worship. Yeah. Tuesday began with Mars and then they changed it to the Teutonic 2 for Tuesday worship. Wednesday started out for Mercury and then it was changed to Woden, Woden's Day worship. Thursday started out for Jupiter and then they changed it for the starting pitcher for the New York Mets. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, Thor. And then Friday started out for Venus. They changed it to Thria Friday worship. And Saturday, of course, Saturn worship. If you're going to set the standard that because a day has a name that is pagan, then not only are you going to have to change the days of the week, but most of you in this room need to change your name. Gregory. Pope, can you say <laughs> Pope Gregory? Huh? Is Jennifer okay? Actually, I'm not sure about Jennifer. <laughs> no, no, no. We're, we're good. We're, You're good? Yeah. But there's, a, there's this, listen, there's this guy in the Bible who was named after a Greek god. Yeah. Apollos. Did Paul say, change your name, heretic? <laughs> no. That guilt by association thing doesn't work and no one who uses it on Christmas is consistent in using it across the board. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't work. So, in order to be consistent, we are now canceling the days of the week. Amen. Yes. No We're just going to be day one, day two, day three, or I guess you could call it the first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week. Same with the days of creation. So you can have like a water, you know, permanent day and then an animal day. Terrible idea. Okay. So, the second reason Christmas is evil is because Jesus wasn't born on December 25th, like I said. Remember? Amen? Well, this is true. Jesus was probably born around September 18th. That's not true. Had to be in the spring. That's Easter. That's Easter. That's his resurrection. Oh, you want? We're gonna throw down afterwards. So that means he would have been conceived around the end of December. See, it's the conception of Jesus that took place in December. Amen. Number three, Christmas trees are pagan. Well, let's look at that because what they claim is that the Bible teaches that over in Jeremiah chapter 10. So I want you to look at that. And some of you haven't seen, but we've got a little video on this. And I'm not boasting, but I'm just telling you, there's a lot of people who saw that video and changed their tune, not because of the video or because of the good-looking guy in it, <clears throat> but because the Bible says what the Bible says. And Jeremiah chapter 10 while you turn there, I'll read the first couple of verses. He says, Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So he's talking about the ways of the heathen. He's telling them not to be like the heathen. And then in verse 3, 
says, For the customs of the people are vain. Now watch this. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman, with the axe. All right? Now some of you got a picture of Chevy Chase right now in your mind, where he cut down the tree, and some of you are now rebuking me because you think that movie's evil. But you know what? Don't judge me. I watch the TV version anyway. Verse 4, now watch what they did. They deck it with silver and with gold. Now watch this. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Now I want to tell you something. That's not taking a tree and just cutting it down and nailing a tree up in your house. The workman with the axe, we're going to see it, we're going to keep reading, but just before we do, I just want to give you this. They took the axe, they cut the tree down, and they whittled down to the size of a little idol. And that's what happened here. Look at verse 5. They are upright as the palm tree. Now watch this. But speak not. You know why he says that? Because they carved a little mouth in it. Look, it says, They must needs be born because they cannot go. Why did he say that? Because they've got little legs on them, but they don't move. Continue. He, be not afraid of them. Why would you be afraid of a tree and why would you call tree them? Mm -hmm. He's talking about idols Amen. carved. Continue. For they cannot do evil, neither also is it in them to do good. Amen. And he continues. Well, we'll go ahead and read verse 6. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. Because those little idols that they took, they cut a tree down and they carved and they nailed it down in the house because what it say in verse 4, when it says they decked it with silver and gold, that's not talking about that cheap dollar big lot stuff you throw on trees. This is talking about taking a little idol that you've carved and actually covering it. Decking means to paint. And you've covered the thing with gold or silver. Now it's worth money. Now it's worth something. So what do you do? You nail that sucker down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And that's what you just read. Now, people have had it pounded in their head that all they read here was you know, someone cutting a tree down and, and sitting it in the house and they don't look at it any further and they're impressed by that. But if you read what it actually says and if you look at the testimony of Scripture, this is said over and over and over. But because in this place it talks about decking it with silver and gold and uses the word tree being cut down, it sounds so good uh, when, it, when you want to preach against uh, Christmas trees that people have used it that way for years. But this same process is described over and over in Scripture. And they never did that. They never cut trees down and put them in their homes back in, in this day. We know that not only from Scripture, but from his, history and archaeology. It's just not something they did. They had groves outdoors and they would set idols up and burn incense and offer sacrifices in groves. But that was outdoors. No one ever cut down a tree. If you were to time travel back to the day of Jeremiah and cut a tree down and nail that tree inside your house and start decorating, the whole neighborhood is going to gather around looking in going, what in the world is wrong with that guy? What is he doing? Why would he cut a good tree and then just nail it in his house like that? Why wouldn't he make a nice little God out of it, like the rest of us? That's what they would have said. Amen. The solid amen. King James Bible preaching and teaching, along with the encouragement of the Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, tune in to our internet radio station available every day, 24 hours a day, at bbfohioradio.com. Join listeners from over 150 nations, all 50 U.S. states, and other U.S. territories who are tuning in and receiving free Bible teaching at bbfohioradio.com.